All right, now we have our crown basically roughed into position. It still needs a little bit more grooming work. I like to clean these up a little bit more yet, but you can start to see some nice white lines showing. Uh, we'll come through here and groom this back a little bit more. This is about as far as I'm gonna take it at this exact point. We're gonna go ahead and start working on the wings. And then once we get done repositioning the wings and getting the head set exactly where we want it, we'll come back in and finish grooming the whole head area. So we're gonna start by grooming the feathers on this wing and then tucking it inside of the side pocket. I always think it's important that you get the feathers lined up really good before you start tucking it in place. It just makes everything flow together a lot nicer and it's a lot easier right now. So I'm just kind of knocking out any residual corn cob grit that might be in the wings. The primaries, which are these long feathers here, all look like they're in very good condition, nice coloration. Not a lot of chips. This all looks good. The secondaries, which one right here, we're going to go ahead and start to kind of get these relined back up. They're pretty floppy because we cased it out and disconnected them. So they are going to move around a little bit. The biggest area that I want to be focusing in on is the culverts, which, is our, which are located all in this area. We want to start lining up these feather patterns again. We're just going to go ahead and take one of these one at a time and make sure that they're lined up correctly. We're going to, right here, they're all bunched together. So we're going to start to pull them towards me, get them back in alignment. It's, it would be a good idea to have some reference in front of you right now as well. Go ahead and look at your reference of a wood duck wing just to see where all these feathers are supposed to be. And exactly how they're supposed to be layered. Sometimes they can be a little stubborn to get back in place. Just give them a good tug. Sometimes that can help. All right, that wind looks pretty good. We'll do the rest of the touch up on it when we go ahead and tuck it into the side pocket. So we're going to fold the wing just like it would be normally. Lift the wing up, pull it forward. And as you can see, this is our side pocket right here. We're going to want to take this wing and tuck it down in this area right in here. Go ahead and grab a, a hold of our scaps, which is going to go over the wing, pull the wing forward, and just slip it right in this slot here. Start to manipulate this in. Sometimes they slip right in and sometimes you have to play around with them a little bit more to get everything to sit correctly. I'm kind of working at a funny angle here. Normally I'd have this right in front of me where I can see everything a little bit better. But I want to make sure that you can see it on camera. Now we're going to go ahead and pin this wing in. And we're going to use like an inch and a quarter bank pins. One inch pins probably aren't long enough and one and a half a little too long. So inch and a quarter bank pins. We're gonna put a pin right in here by the ulnar and radius bone. And we're gonna push that through there and right into the form. And temporarily lock this wing up in place. And now we're gonna start grooming all this together. I'm going to pull up your secondaries that fell down, get those pulled up. Start to feed them inside of this side pocket, kind of manipulate this side pocket around. Right now we're just kind of shaping this entire wing area, just roughing it into place for now. 
because we are going to have to kind of smush this when we set the other wing in a little bit. But we're just kind of roughing it in, getting a general layout of what we're looking for. Normally these side pockets, these feathering on the side pocket feathers are layered almost in a cascading effect. That's something that we're going to be working on getting back in place in a little bit. Just want to rough everything in place at this point. We'll have these secondaries exposed a little bit more just so you can see some color. Wood ducks have a lot of beautiful color that you don't want to hide. We'll pull our scaps up and over a little bit more. I really want to have my scaps connect right onto these side pocket feathers. Just keep manipulating these feathers around, lining them up just how you want them. You want your side pockets to butt right up to your breast feather area here. And a lot of these feathers that are keep sticking up, we're going to be pinning those down a little bit later on. And I just want to focus on getting these layered nicely. Take one at a time. Start to pull them forward. Put them in alignment. That's okay for now. These are going to have to get aligned a little bit better a little bit later on when we come back through and do our second grooming after we have everything lined up with the other wing and the tail set. But that's okay for now. We have a, a rough shape put in place of how we want that side to look. One thing that I want to touch on, it's always important that you keep your migratory bird tag right with your bird during the entire process. It always has to stay with the bird. So we're working on the wing now that we're going to have slightly exposed. So we need to go ahead and realign all the feathers just like we did on the other one. We got to make sure that our primaries look nice, that they're not all frayed up. We just kind of run our fingers along here and realign these feathers. We also want to make sure that our secondaries, which are right here, that they look nice as well. Some of this will be manipulated a little bit more when we tuck in our wing. And then we're going to work on the covert feathers, get all these back in place how they should be. You really, sometimes you have to go with each feather and realign every feather on the wing because they, they can get misaligned and get bunched up. And it's kind of a puzzle putting them back together again. That's why it's important that you have reference available that you can be looking at to see exactly how all these culverts line up with each other and the, the exact layering pattern that they're in. And so that looks pretty good now. We're going to go ahead and start to tuck this wing into the position that we want it to be in for the finished mount. So we're going to pull these primaries, fold them in a little bit more. We're going to pu push the ulna and the radius bone up alongside the humerus bone and start to angle this wing back up over the burn. Push down a little bit, right on the wing. Start to line this up into position, exactly how we want it. I'm going to slightly turn this so I can get a slightly better perspective on it. Now is when you want to start looking at the flow of the bird, how your head's going to work, how your wings look, how your legs are going to connect with everything. 
That's, that's everything that I'm keeping in mind right now as I'm positioning this wing. Having a lot of reference available is very helpful as well. You want to make sure that everything flows together. You don't want anything to look static or out of place. You want it to look like it's just naturally lifting its wing out. Maybe it's going to start preening. Maybe it's going to go into a stretch. You want to keep everything flowing. Be thinking of fluids like, like water. Everything's flowing. So we're just continuing here manipulating this wing around. Kind of bending the head in position as we go. Starting to shape up into a real nice tight little mount. I'm thinking on this pose, we really want to show off all these beautiful wing colorations. You have the beautiful iridescence. So we're going to keep this pretty flared out just to show off those colorations. I mean, naturally, they might be all tight and bundled up. but We, we really want to display that. That's what your client wants to see. That's where they're getting these things mounted. They want the beauty of the bird. So the first thing that we're going to start doing is we're going to start getting these secondaries displayed out just how we want them and then we're going to tape them into position about how they are right now is how we want them to be these the silver linings that's what you want to have showing so we're going to take a little bit of tape and we're going to come up from the underside of these primaries to start to manipulate these into position and tape right underneath Flare them out a little bit, give them a little bit of definition. Then we're going to continue flaring these primaries out all the way, moving back. You can use your tweezers to pull onto each one and set it into place. Something about like that. I, th I think that looks pretty nice. You can see those beautiful colors very nicely. Everything's lined up. Everything's in position. Now we're going to get started on lining up these secondaries. Sometimes I might put a wire behind this wing just to give us some stability for our secondaries to lay into. But I don't think I'm going to need to in this case. I think just tape and paper is going to take care of everything nicely. So we're going to go ahead and put some tape on the primaries down here in line with the secondaries and we're just going to pull these secondaries out and start to line them up and pull them back spreading them out as we go showing off all those colors and then displaying out these final black ones here something right about like that You want to keep an eye on all the other feather patterns around it as well. Now we're going to come up and work on these coverts a little bit. Get all these feathers lined back up. It takes a lot of patience to go feather by feather, but the end product's more than worth it. Just going to kind of pull and tuck and realign all these. We have our scapular group up here. This is what goes over the wing. These are laying nicely. Sometimes they want to bunch up and lift up, but because we have the wing slightly raised up, they're laying in very nice. Keep some tension on these here. We want the, these feathers pulled up slightly coming over the wing. It's giving it some nice natural realism, like it's just lifting it out of its side pocket, getting ready to maybe stretch or clean, something like that. Now that we have this wing area set pretty good, we're going to go ahead and flip it around and work some more on the other side where we tuck that wing in, kind of start to finalize that position. Just going to flip this right around here. As you can see, everything's got all disheveled from working on the other side. So we need to start realigning all of this. Getting it all aligned back up just how it's supposed to. Start by 
getting these side pockets lined up a little bit better. Some of these side pockets here were new growth feathering. So the, the ones that were there originally probably got pulled out and new ones started to grow in. That's where they're not in perfect alignment here. See like these are all stacked perfectly, but then you have some of these here that aren't, they're not quite as developed as the ones are a little bit farther down on the bird. Let's put, tuck those in. Pull these secondaries up a little bit more. We want to get working on these feathers as well. We'll get these pushed down. Sometimes the feathering right in this, right behind the head, it gets sucked in, so you have to pull them out. That's what's going to connect these two feather groups together nicely on the back side. Once we have these set about where we want everything to be, we're going to run a little bit of tape just to lock everything in place. Want to make sure you don't get your crown in here accidentally, but we just want to hold these in place while we're working here. You can see this is a little disheveled in here, so we'll start Manipulating these back into shape. Get our crown up. Get this corner looking nicer. It's just a matter of pushing and pulling these feather groups around and getting them back into alignment. I think that looks pretty good right now, in, right in this whole area. At this point, I think we're going to move on to the tail. We're going to get this set before that liquid nail sets up anymore. Then we'll come back over and re-groom the entire bird again. Now we're going to work on getting this tail set. I'm going to have this tail flare it out pretty nice to show off the colors, as well as it works nice with this pose. You could have it bunched up, but we're going to have this displayed out. So what we want to do is we're going to take a 16 gauge wire and we're going to run this right up the center of the, the tail and shove it into the form right through our liquid nails right in the center of the tail slot. You have to kind of estimate where you're going. But you want to have it lined up pretty much in the center just to give yourself a kind of a, a guide of where to part the feathers on each side. So we're going to run up right along the tail, find our tail slot, Come through the center and just push that wire right into the form. About like that. And we can go ahead and remove some of this excess. Now we can use this wire throughout the process to manipulate the angle of the tail. So if we want it to be drooped down a little bit more or picked up, we're going to have it slightly drooped down like because like, the wood duck's in a relaxed pose. So we don't have to have everything alert. So we're going to start by making sure that our tail quills are still set in the tail slot, how they should be. I'm kind of manipulating and moving them around, making sure they're in there, and then we'll start to display them out. You don't have to go, you know, way open like this, but just display it out nicely just to show off some color because this, this thing has a very beautiful tail. We're going to need two pieces of tape, one for each side, and we're going to tape on the underside of the feathers. We're just going to keep manipulating these feathers, get them into position. There we go. We had a couple of feathers that were not in the, in the tail slots. They were being pulled down, so we've pulled those back in. We've got them in that tail slot, and now we can start flaring this tail out. I'm going to take a little slightly longer piece of tape. And we're just going to 
evenly layer these feathers one at a time. Come to the center, making sure that we don't catch the feathers on the other side. And just line it up with our center tail feather. Something that looks about like that. Repeat that process on this side. Start on the end and start layering these feathers one on top of each other, evenly spaced out. Right like that. Now we'll look at the tail and we'll make sure that it looks level and everything's lined up. And we'll start to groom out these back feathers that lay over the tail. A little bit of borax coming out there. A lot of times on wood ducks they have these back saddle feathers here. And you want to make sure these are displayed out. If the tail was a little bit tighter, you could actually have these droop down and hanging over the sides of the wood duck. But because we have the tail displayed out so much, they're going to have to ride on the tail feathers themselves. Another thing that you want to be looking for, and this is going to come into play, especially when we use put paper on here, is you don't want your tail to be leaning one way or the other. You want it to be in line with your form. So if your form is straight like this, you want your tail to be straight. If your form is angled, you want your tail to be angled right with it. So we're going to put these up because it is running at a slight angle up like this. We're going to slightly angle this tail up to match it. To continue to groom these feathers a little bit here. Get everything lined up nice on the back. You want to make sure that any feathers that have a lot of color are, are out and they're exposed because that's what the people want to see. Now that we have that displayed out nicely, we're going to go ahead and cut two strips of paper, one to go on top and one to go on bottom on each side, and that's going to keep our tail nice and straight like this and keep it from drying warped like this. We're going to use file folder paper for this. It's pretty much the perfect thickness, not too thick that it bends the feathers unnaturally, but not too thin that it's just wobbly. Go ahead and split these right in half. And we're going to use paper clips to attach this. Come up on the underside of this one. Take our top layer of paper. We're going to put a paper clip right here. We're going to repeat that process on the other side. Now when we put our center paper clip to lock these two together, it's going to pretty much straighten this tail out. So if, if we wanted to have it slightly coming down like this, we'd have to put a paper clip here and a paper clip here instead of right in the center. But we're going to go ahead and put it right in the center. And just try to manipulate these down a little bit if we can, just to give it a little bit of an arch, a little bit of flow. You don't want, to, you don't want it to be static. We're also going to put a little bit of paper on this wing here as well, just to tighten up these secondaries a little bit more. I don't want them to be disheveled, I want them to be nice and tight. So we're going to put some of the same paper up there, except this time we're going to be using uh, Euro pins. Or if you don't have Euro pins, these white headed pins work great, or regular T pins, or even one inch bank pins. Just something to lock this paper in place. So we'll come up underneath the wing. We'll put 
another piece of paper over the top. And we'll pin this in. And I think we will actually put a paper clip on this part of it right here. I think that's all we need. That's just going to lock the primaries and the secondaries into position. Doing that, we've slightly misaligned these covert feathers again. So we're just going to regroom these, line them up nice, and then what we can actually do is run some tape along the top of these to hold these down. So we could take a piece of tape, and we can grab onto these feathers and gently pull them towards myself and just lock these feathers right in place. That's gonna hold that down and keep it from raising up. Now we could run tape all along this if we need to, and we might do that yet if it looks like these culverts are starting to lift up. But I think right now that looks pretty good. At this time, what I would suggest doing is taking a step back and looking at the mount, maybe even walking away for five or 10 minutes just to clear your head, and then come back and reevaluate everything that you just did Look at some more reference and check everything again. So we'll be back in about five minutes. So we're back after taking a little break just to check everything over. There are a few little lumps on the breast that we want to get cleaned up. Some of these can just be pushed up with our hand. Some of them will need to be pinned in. One of the ones that need to be pinned up is this one right here. We want to go ahead and just push this and pin this up. So we'll take a Euro pin or any kind of a pin and we'll just push this area up. And if need be, you can put a piece of paper here as well. But just that pin should take care of it. A couple of these other lumps would dry in. We'll just keep an eye on them. Uh, otherwise, I think it's coming together pretty nice. We do have to do a little bit of grooming on the crown. And the rest of the bird actually looks pretty decent. I'm not seeing a lot that needs to be done right now. We do want to make this top line a little bit more defined. It's a little scraggly back here. This second white line looks fine. This line looks so good, it's, everything's lining up nice. We have a nice pattern everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and start working back here a little bit more, just realigning these feathers. Okay, now that we have the bird pretty much groomed just how we want it, we want to come through and inject the toes. The reason why we want to inject the toes is during the drying process, they will start to dry out and shrivel up. And so we want to inject them with this injection fluid so they stay nice and plump. The injection fluid that I like to use is the Master Blend Injection Fluid, Part A and Part B. I find that to be the superior product for injecting bird feet. So we need to do a little setup. The first thing I recommend is wearing safety goggles. You always want to wear goggles whenever you're injecting anything like this because there's always a chance that it might blow back out of the syringe on you. So you want to make sure you're wearing safety goggles. Also, because this is a chemical, it's important that you wear the proper safety materials with a pair of rubber gloves to keep any of it off your skin and that you also work in a well-ventilated area, preferably with an exhaust fan. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up. We're gonna be using a 3cc syringe. And because this is not the kind that twists down tight, it's the pull-off kind, we're gonna go ahead and use the electrical tape to fasten the tip to the syringe itself so it doesn't fly off during the injection process and cause the injection fluid to spray all over the bird. We'll just glue this, we will just tape this in place you can use hot glue if you want, that does work as well. But tape works the best. Just make that nice and tight. We'll go ahead and put our safety goggles on, as well as our gloves. Make sure that you have a window open or you're working in a well-ventilated area or you have your exhaust fan going. The chemical fumes are not too bad for this, but you don't want to take any chances. Now these are mixed 50-50, part A and part B, so we're going to put some of each in each one of these containers. Now 
Now we're going to pull some into the syringe, about one and a half cc's of each kind to fill up the syringe. Now we want to shake this just to mix the two together. And then we're going to start by injecting these bottom toes. You want to make sure that you pay attention to what you're doing and that you watch to make sure you don't poke back through so you shoot a stream of injection fluid onto your bird. You can cover the foot with a plastic bag while you're doing this if you want to. That works really well as well. But right now I'm just using my finger to slightly shield it just to make sure that nothing comes flying out. And I'm just putting in enough injection fluid to lightly plump up the, the toes. You don't want to fill it up to the point that they look like they're on steroids. You just want to gently put a small amount in, just enough to rebuild what was naturally there. We'll come back up into this joint area. We'll put a small amount in here. And we'll put a small amount up on the shank itself. A lot of times it doesn't hurt too to twist the tie off right where the shank meets the leg. That can help from causing ejection fluid to run into the bird skin itself and come out on the feathers. But we're just going to be careful with how we do this. This foot's been injected. The little bit of excess that's on there will wipe off in a second. Now we'll start on this one as well. This one had that big infection or wart or something on it. So we're just kind of injecting around that carefully. Do the last toe. We'll run a little bit here at the joint. And we'll put a little bit up here in the shank. It is starting to set up, so we will stop now. We have enough fluid in there. We'll go ahead and dispose of this properly and remove these chemicals from our work area. Right now, before this injection fluid completely sets up, we want to take a paper towel and remove all the excess. You can use a small amount of lacquer thinner for this as well. But if you're using that, make sure you're definitely in a well-ventilated area. A paper towel works just as good though, with, even without the lacquer thinner. We're just removing the excess. If you don't remove it, you're going to have a big buildup of injection fluid that's going to harden out on your foot and you're going to have to try to scrape it off later. It's a lot easier to remove it now. This is also a really good time to be looking if you did have any blowback or if any of this gets on the feathers to kind of make a note of where that is. And now would be the time to try to cut that out and regroom the feathers out of that area. A little bit of lacquer thinner might help, but once it's embedded in those feathers, it can be hard to get out. So you're really going to have to try to carefully cut it out and regroom that area before the bird sets up completely. It's going to clean off these shanks a little bit better. So as of this point now, once these are completely set up, we're going to go ahead and put it onto our habitat piece. And then we'll do our little final groomings and touching up and looking everything over from there. All right, now that these feet have pretty much dried out the material that we put inside of it, there's, you can still manipulate them nicely, but they are pretty much set up. We're going to go ahead and drill a hole right through here to attach our bird onto. Remember, this is only standing by one leg, so we just have to drill in one hole. We're going to put it right here to start and see how this looks. We're going to drill all the way through this base right down through the bottom, and then we'll connect the wire right onto the bottom. So we've got that blown out of there. Kind of clean up some of this excess foam, etc. All right, so we've got our hole drilled through. We're going to go ahead and take our wood duck off of our mounting stand.
We're going to bend this wire back straight so we can get it through that hole. And we don't need all this wire at all anymore. I'm just going to remove quite a bit of this just to make it a little bit easier to work with. All right, so we'll go ahead and drop this in this hole. Bend it back. I want to try to hide that wire right like that. We'll come down here. We'll bend this wire up. We're not going to fasten it securely at this point because we'll have to take it back off this base to paint it. But now that we have it on here, we're going to go ahead and take a step back and just take a look at it. See how things are looking. The pose where it's in right now isn't, actually isn't too bad. But we might just angle it a little bit. Now there's a lot of different things we can do with this foot. We can either pull it up more, push it up. We can fold these together. A lot of times you'll see them mounted where they're, the backs are out like this. That's another classic way that you can do it. We are going to sl slightly tighten them up and have it about like this, kind of a natural tucked back pose. Something about like this, I think that looks nice. We're going to want to go ahead and tape this back foot into whatever position we want it to be in. Otherwise, as it's drying, it's going to dry cocked like this instead of in a nice straight shape, however we decide to form it. Still, I'm kind of debating whether or not to have the back out like this, but I think We'll kind of meet it halfway. Going to do a combination of tucked in together and slightly out. We put a piece of tape on the front. We're going to put a piece of tape on the back side as well. That should pretty much take care of that right now. I'm going to come in and look at some of our feather patterns. Make sure everything looks nice. Adjust our tail. Make sure that is lined up how we want it. Check some of these lumps that we had going on in the belly area. They all look pretty tight and nice. I'm going to go ahead again and take another step back and just look at it and see how the shape looks. So we took a step back and I, I really like the angle that it's on. I think it looks really nice, especially with this habitat around it. It looks like it's just a classic wood duck scene. Now we have the body angled slightly like this, which is how we want it. It's not straight like this against the wall, it's slight angle. That's giving it a lot of flow and a lot of nice action. I'm going to go ahead and turn the stand off camera so you can come in and see it because this is not the nice swivel stance you have to move the whole stand. So you can see we've moved it now so you can get a nice front on shot of it. You can see how we have the head aligned. You can see how the body's at a slight angle on the driftwood. It's not straight. You can kind of get a feel for how we have the legs set up. There is a little depression in the neck right here. We're going to go ahead and groom that out. We're just going to take our tweezers and we are just going to pull that down slightly. Just blend that in. Just like that. We got rid of that depression. Uh, the back of the head looks nice. This back side pockets look good. I think we're going to go ahead and flip it back and take a look at the tail. And I think that this mounts pretty much a wrap. One thing that we want to make sure we do is you want to make sure you keep your migratory tag with it. We're going to go ahead and attach that to it now just so we stay in regulation. All right, so now that we have the bird finished mounted, we want to let this dry for about one week. And then after it's dry, we'll come in and we'll pull off all the carding and we will come through and paint the legs. One thing that I want to touch on is after about 24 hours, I'm going to come back and check everything again realign these, this crown if necessary, 
check the wings, just keep regrooming it. Even up to two to three days after I've mounted it, I'll keep coming back and just checking it. But it's gonna need about a week to dry, and then we'll come through and epoxy a little bit on this one toe where that growth was, and then we'll go ahead and paint it up and permanently attach it to our base. One tool that you can use if you have a buildup of any borax or corn cob grit or to help with feather realignment is this little brush tool. I think you can buy this from Matuska. A couple of different places sell it. It's just a barber brush that works really good to realign these feathers, make them shiny again, and just put everything back in alignment. 